Antarctica, the most remote, unforgiving and inhospitable environment on Earth. Just the mention of this faraway land is enough to make any traveler's eyes light up. For us, we not only get to experience the wildness and the wonder, we get to do it in complete six-star ultra luxury on the scenic cliffs. Getting to Antarctica is nowhere near as arduous as you might expect. After flying into Ushuaia, we board Scenic Eclipse and take on the Drake Passage, which will ultimately deliver us to Antarctica. Well, we're right in the middle of the Drake Passage, one of the most infamous bodies of water on Earth. And if you're going to Antarctica, you have to cross this. Now, you can be really lucky and have this as smooth as a mill pond, and that's called the Drake Lake. But you can also get what's called the Drake Shake, when these seas are five or six metres. Our voyage so far fits somewhere between those two scenarios, but it's all been smooth sailing, thanks to Scenic Eclipse state-of-the-art stabilising system. Our arrival to the Antarctic Peninsula is earlier than expected. And fortunately, Scenic is ready to adapt to give us the best experience on offer. You know, one of the great things about travelling with Scenic is that at any opportunity, they'll put you on the water. We've just arrived on what they call a surprise and delight. I can tell you, I'm very surprised and completely delighted. Look at this. Where else in the world do you see anything like this? No, it's incredible. This is Fornia Bay, and it's a wonderful taste of what's to come. So much to take in. It's, it's another world. It is another world. I sailed with an astronaut, and he described it exactly as being the closest thing to going to outer space. You get on your ship, you're underway for a couple days, and then you arrive to an unworldly place. Otherworldly is a very accurate description of this surreal, and spectacular landscape. Well, this iceberg is basically frozen, right, obviously, but it's snow that's fallen hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. But once it's broken off the glacier face, it could be out here for years and sometimes even decades, depending on the size of the iceberg. You know, the one animal that I really, really wanted to see here was a leopard seal. And this is just day one. He's just having a nice snooze right in front of the cliffs. Incredible. And the pinch me moments just keep coming. Just when you think it couldn't get any better, we're right next to a humpback and a baby. Scenic's fleet of Zodiacs will ferry you to some of the most incredible locations on the Antarctic Peninsula. Well, this is a moment I'm never ever going to forget. Stepping onto the seventh continent for the very first time. After more than 30 years as a filmmaker and photojournalist, my travels have afforded me some mind-blowing experiences, but this magical white continent had eluded me. This is the Antarctica we've all dreamt about. Ice carving off the glaciers, seals and penguins in abundance, and of course, the wild and woolly weather. So this is Antarctica proper, isn't it? It's Northern Ireland. Yeah, that's correct. We are on the continent. If you had skis, you could ski all the way to the South Pole right now. For us first-timers, this is an experience of a lifetime. When you look at the surrounds, the glaciers coming down, the falls of ice, the animals, it is quite stunning. It is something you will only see in Antarctica. These guys are Gentoo penguins, and they've taken up residence in a precarious spot 
with an actively carving glacier feeding right into their rookery. How does it affect the penguins? Obviously, they've chosen this as the rookery, but they're in peril all the time. Yeah, that's a really good question. If you look back here, you can see that they're up off the beach. In fact, up onto the hill even to try to avoid those waves. But also, those are the first places where the snow melts off. And that gives them the first opportunity to make a nest, lay the egg, and be successful in the breeding. Back on board, Scenic Eclipse has your every whim completely taken care of. Well, I'm sure that the early explorers, when they came off the ice, weren't greeted by anything like this. Beautiful home-baked pastries and Belgian chocolate. And on the Eclipse, that's the difference. Half the day, you spend out there exploring, and then the other half of the day, you're in here in the lap of luxury. When it comes to travel experiences, the white continent of Antarctica is about as adventurous and otherworldly as it gets. Waking each day to icebergs and glaciers and the vast southern ocean brimming with wildlife is surreal. But experiencing it on scenic eclipse takes it to another level entirely. The setup on the Eclipse is just extraordinary. It's like lifestyles of the rich and famous. And this is the number one toy. We're about to go up in it. As well as a fleet of Zodiacs, kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and even a six-passenger submarine, Scenic Eclipse houses not one, but two of these state-of-the-art Airbus helicopters. So few people are just privileged to get to do this. It's a, it's a rare privilege, and uh, I appreciate every second of it. What flying up here gives you is this extraordinary perspective on the size of this place. These uh, ice walls are two, three hundred feet high, some of them. And then when you look down on the icebergs, they're just massive. Eight hello, eight hello, good man. Yeah, you really get a sense of how precious and important it is. And it's only when you come here that that's really hammered home. Some might say it makes you feel insignificant, but I think it makes us feel important. And we take care of this. It's a treasure for the whole world to share. It's not wasted. Flying in one of the most remote places on the planet is a rare privilege that very few people ever get to experience. Every moment you're somewhere where no one else has ever been. Even if you go to the scene, scenic spots, there's so much terrain, so much difference, especially from the air. You'll see it differently than anybody else ever has and may ever will. I just have to say this is a, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had, being in a chopper here above Antarctic Sound and uh, this will be a uh, thing I'll never, never forget. Every time conditions allow, the Discovery team get the fleet of kayaks and stand-up paddle boards into the water to give guests a unique perspective of their surroundings. Perhaps the most exciting view of all is what lies beneath the surface. I just can't quite conceive what I'm about to do. Come on over to your left, Dave. There you go. Welcome aboard. 24 volt, 8 0. 260 volt, 8 2. Right through Antarctica and now South Georgia, scenic Neptune takes guests into uncharted waters. Last night, I literally couldn't get to sleep just because of the excitement of this moment, as well as what are we going to see? 
you know, and just that unknown was just so exciting. You know, what's that? Is that, is that man-made? No, I think it's a bone of some sort. A bone. A whale bone. Yeah, Spine. Yeah. One of the vertebrae. So every dive is basically a new adventure. You just have no idea what you're going to see every time. Exactly. And every location we go to within South Georgia, there's no dive history. So everything we do and we see is going to be for the first time. So if someone ever asks, well, what will we see down there? We can't give them an answer. We can ex propose what we might see, but we just don't know because no one's ever explored the depths. and welcome to South Georgia. Well, this is totally awe-inspiring. I feel like I've just landed on another planet. I've been watching documentaries about South Georgia all my life, but actually being here is totally surreal. They call this place the Serengeti of the Southern Ocean, and it really does live up to all the hype. It's impossible not to feel privileged and humbled standing here among all of this. Every Zodiac cruise and shore excursion in this part of the world offers mind-blowing experiences. But Gold Harbour is one stop that captures the best of it all with its dramatic landscapes and awesome animal encounters. Coming over on the Zodiac this morning, the driver mentioned there was some serious blubber on the beach, and now I see what he means. These are southern elephant seals. Each one can weigh up to 4,000 kilograms. At the moment, it's pretty quiet, but during the breeding season, it's all hell for leather, males fighting against each other aggressively. Right now, they're molting, so they're laying low, conserving energy, and staying close to keep warm. These impressive marine mammals breed in abundance in South Georgia, with the small island home to more than 50% of the world's southern elephant seal population. Some of them look like they've been in the wars, so they've got scars on them. I'm not in the war, but you know, if you're a male, you gotta fight for your harem if you check it out. Especially like right where their neck is. They would go on their backs and then really just fight each other right where the neck is. But right now you can see they're all huddled together. They have to, you know, replenish their fur just within a couple of weeks. They're not going out then and feeding, so it's just a time where you want to conserve as much energy as possible. And if you're the one in the middle, you just win. Oh, you that's know? the best spot? That's the best spot. Wind others, breaks all around you? Exactly, the others keep you warm. And they are a true seal, so they don't have little ears like our yeah, fur seals. Exactly, so they don't yeah. have little ears and they also cannot gallop the way you could see with the fur seals. So what they only do is like they wiggle like this. And it's crazy because it's four, up to four tons that need to be made moving, you know? So what they only do is they burst in these sort of little, like three, four jumps, if you want to say so. They look like a caterpillar when they're on yeah, the move. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> The sheer abundance of wildlife in this concentrated area is overwhelming in the best possible way. In a colony of things like this, you can imagine the vocalization, the frequencies, they can recognize each other from wow. thousands. And are they operating at, at a frequency we can't hear? Yeah. They are. Exactly. Sneaky devils. Free, well, you know. <laughs> and also, it's very crucial for the chicks and the parents because imagine in this place when you come to feed the chicks, it's like, whoa, yeah. where are you? Yeah. And they start, the chicks will be able to, to listen to that and connect. It's amazing. Like, there's a whole world we see, and then there's a whole world here that we don't hear or understand. <laughs> Gold Harbour and South Georgia in general is a place that guarantees to leave you truly humbled. How does this place make you feel? It's like a religious experience. Seriously, it's very personal. Uh, 
every time. It doesn't matter how many times I have the chance to see this place or many other places here, it feels that very special. It's wonderfully surreal to go from the shore experiences to the ultra luxury of scenic eclipse. And just when I thought my day couldn't get any better, I'm capping it off with the ultimate indulgence. Its fully equipped sensor spa boasts everything from saunas to steam rooms and plunge pools as well as a hairdresser to help you transform from daytime explorer mode to nighttime glam. We've traveled with a number of other operators over the years with our friends and others, uh, probably close to 20 expedition trips, all in all over the last 10 or 15 years. And we would rate this as the, the top of the pile in terms of quality and uh, exceeding expectations. So hard to beat, a real seven star experience. to be one of the best ways to experience Europe's Mediterranean coastline on board the world's first six-star discovery yacht Scenic Eclipse, delivering you into the heart and soul of the region's most adored destinations, all in ultra-luxury style. Our nine-day Riviera Delights cruise with Scenic set sail during the European summer taking in the best of this part of the world, including the spectacular Cinque Terre World Heritage National Park. The Cinque Terre is a highlight of the Italian Riviera. Five little villages clinging to the cliffs along a 15 kilometre stretch of coastline. You can either walk all five villages, takes around six hours, or you can float in on a ferry. Our adventure today begins in the stunning medieval fishing town of Porto Venere. From here, scenic transfer us to the Cinque Terre villages. Monterosso is the largest of the five villages and our first stop. It seems that uh, they chose the difficult option and built their houses right on top of the cliffs. Why'd they do that? During medieval times, even before the inhabitants of the area, they realised that uh, this area was really great for the cultivation of grapes because the territory was and still is always in the sun, so they decided to move from the inside area to the sea. So they've got the wine, the sunshine, the coastal views, they've got everything here! Yeah, yeah lucky we are! <laughs> Remarkably, this isolated and dramatic coastline was only put on the tourist map in the 1970s thanks to some pretty adventurous backpackers. It's so beautiful here. How many people live in Montorosa? Uh, they are more about 2,000. During the summer period, you'd get more than 2,000 visitors a day. Yeah, a lot coming from all over the world. Happy German, happy English, people. yeah. A melting so. pot of happy, tanned, drunk people. <laughs> <laughs> The trek between Monterosso and the nearby picture-perfect village of Venazza takes around two hours by foot or a short ferry ride. Vernazza seems to be the quintessential village of the Cinque Terre. Yeah, it, it is. We have so many paths you can walk through and uh, Right at the end of the path, a wonderful church which is dedicated to Santa Margherita, and then our wonderful typical Carugis. 
they What's are What's a Karuji? Karuji, it's a very, very narrow pedestrian uh, road, typical of the area where we are. Karuji, it's uh, an Arab word. And, uh, but there are no cars here because it's UNESCO protected. Yeah. For centuries, locals have cultivated the dramatic hillside vineyards by hand, producing award-winning local white wines. So, of course, being in the Cinque Terre, we have to drink wine, wine from the yeah, Cinque sure. Terre. White wine made with the three different kind of grapes and the typical of the era where we are, Cinque Terre D.O.C. Let's Chichin. try it. Chichin. <laughs> on board and there are plenty of ways to soak in our indulgent discovery yacht life. The spa's temperature controlled vitality pool is the ultimate way to unwind and immerse yourself in the stunning views. Or if you're keen on sharing your day, the Panorama Bar is the afternoon meeting spot for a sundowner and to mingle with fellow guests. But after a day of sightseeing, I'm ready for my Mediterranean baptism. There have been a lot of firsts on this trip, including this one, the first time in the Med. <gasps> I've got a big gulp full of life, that's for sure. Oh, so beautiful. Discover the benchmark in ultra-luxury cruising on board Scenic Eclipse 2024 or 2025. Experience an all-inclusive journey of a lifetime with over 60 destinations to discover. Getaway viewers can save $300 per person off select Scenic Eclipse cruises. For more information or to request your voucher, visit scenicgetaway.com.au, call 1300 790 372 or speak to your nearest scenic travel advisor. World. We are in the Arctic, where Mother Nature's architect has been hard at work and you have the best seat in the house as we begin our voyage amongst the wildlife of Svalbard, Norway. Then we'll wander along the iceberg alleys of Greenland and wrap things up with a little fire and ice in Iceland. So get ready for the ultimate Arctic adventure. Let's go, Johnny. All right. This largely unknown wonderland is just one of the many ultra-luxury highlights of our journey aboard Scenic Eclipse. Scenic's Arctic Islands voyage takes in some of the most remote locations on Earth, kicking off in the little town of Longyearbyen, the capital of Norway's Svalbard archipelago. Okay. Monkey grip. Thank you. Now this is about as close to the North Pole as most of us will ever be lucky enough to get to. And every single day, this fleet of Zodiacs can guide us even closer to the action. So this really is the far frontier. This is the back of beyond. This is the end of the world. And it feels that way. It's a very desolate part of the world down here. This is a series of low hills that we're surrounded by right now. So Jonathan, that is a glacier all the way along. Is that right? It appears as though it's a long white cloud. This is a special kind of glacier called an ice cap. It's kind of one step up from a normal glacier, if you want, because a normal glacier is like a river of ice. It's sitting in the landscape and it's flowing in a certain direction and it's kind of being directed by the shape of the land itself. Yes. Whereas here, we've got ice on such a big scale that the ice actually lies over the top of the entire landscape. Well, the surroundings are remarkable enough, but this faraway land holds some of the most precious wildlife sightings on the planet. Oh, there it is. 
We've got a polar bear just over there, just up on top of the ridge. It's not a skinny bear. It's got a bit of meat on him. Beautiful. Oh, and he's not bothered by us at all. No. No, he's probably known that we've been around for quite a while. They've got these incredibly powerful sensors, particularly sense of smell. So he's known that the ship's been in the area and he knows exactly that we're here as well. Seeing them in their natural environment is a whole new kind of experience because you get a feeling for just how big this place is, how small we are within this place. And you get a feeling for the fact that they very much belong here. It's the wildlife and the raw beauty of this pristine environment that brings guests to this part of the world. But with luxurious living quarters like this, our six-star discovery yacht ensures it is not just the locations that steal the show. It's really a level of indulgence that many of us have only ever dreamt of and it's complemented by one of the most superior navigation systems on the sea. The ship is, is built for, polar, for mm. polar regions for the ice, so we can go through ice up to one, easily one meter of ice. And uh, so that's the, the, in terms of safety, that's mm. the first important thing. Second point, she has a very advanced uh, propulsion system right. with azipods, which are basically uh, propellers that turn on 360 degrees, so she is extremely maneuverable. Yeah. So we can't sail through the, the narrow fjords. With respect, I'm listening to everything that you're saying, but I think that I can see a whale in the distance. Am okay. I making that up? Am I crazy? No, no, you're right. You're right, there is a whale. There is a blow over there. Quite a, quite a big one, very vertical. That's a big whale over there. That's a buzz. That's a little bit exciting. I know yeah. it's your job, but to me, that's really exciting. Maybe we can go and have a look, you know? Yeah, let's go and have a look. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Rance, can you take the wheel, please? <laughs> hey, Rance, take the wheel! <laughs> this is what is so exciting about this journey, is that I can be here, I can say to the captain, there is a whale, and he goes, hey, let's, let's go over, let's have a look. It's so much about the spontaneity of this trip, and that is what's so wonderful about, about this technology. And the Arctic just keeps delivering. Spirenberg. Blubber Town? Blubber Town. It was the place back in the day. The former whaling settlement of Spirenberg is in the northwest of Svalbard, a Norwegian archipelago in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. Why did they call this Blubber Town? Smerenberg. Uh, in the 1620s, 400 years ago, uh, there were more than 200 people living here and whaling. And this started with the Dutch. So Smerenberg means blubber town in Dutch. And they outfished the waters, did they? They did, like so many other places. Uh, I think it took not even 50, 60 years and uh, populations were almost decimated. Fortunately, those numbers have been restored along with some other very popular Arctic marine mammals. I think we all love walrus. How could we not? They are everything the social norm tells us not to be. Really large, smelly, and they make funny bodily sounds. How could you not love that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and why are they designed in that way, this big, fat, blubbery? Well, it's taken millions of years. The walrus is now the only one of their species. There's only one type of walrus left, and they need the blubber to stay alive in these conditions. Okay. They have a huge amount of fat, just to stay warm. Okay. The way they pile up on each other, that's just a social behavior. They do not need it for warmth. They are warm enough on their own. And um, is there a name for when they pile up together? Figma tactic is their behavior. I love that term. Don't you? Figma tactic. 
Is that right? Yeah. It's kind of a surreal feeling to be an intrepid explorer one moment and then cocooned in six-star luxury the next. OK, now, you never heard this from me. I've been asked to keep it a secret, but for many of us, our favourite part of the ship is here, the observation lounge. Yes, it is a great view, but you can make yourself a cuppa and there's the most fantastic selection of books. Just found this one, but the one that's on high rotation, the most popular one, Polar bears. It's beautiful. Anyway, you never heard this from me. Is it so late? At 168 metres in length and with a maximum of just 200 guests for polar regions, there's loads of places on board to settle in and watch the gorgeous scenery just pass you by. Is it so There are always a few little surprises for the more adventurous among us. All right, ready? Three, yeah. two, two, one, go! go. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was very invigorating. <laughs> Were you Fabulous. Nervous? Absolutely. Um, but that's brilliant. It's so beautiful. I do not want to do this, I do not want to do this, but apparently a rite of passage when you're in the Arctic is the polar plunge. Count me in, guys. Three, two, one. It's very salty. I didn't get the shot, I'm going to do it again. I hate to admit it, now I've done it. I feel amazing, I'm so glad I've done it. Welcome back to our magical Arctic Islands journey from the little-known Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard. Scenic eclipse has transported us even further into the remote far reaches of this planet as we cruise down the east coast of Greenland. So if Greenland has more ice than Iceland, why is Greenland called Greenland? And Iceland called Iceland? So there's kind of a famous story about how Greenland got its name. Um, they say it comes from Eric the Red, who was a Viking that was exiled from Iceland for murdering and various other crimes. Um, and the story goes that he brought himself and 14 longships to Greenland. And he wanted to attract more Vikings here. So he named it Greenland. Uh, to, to it's lush. Yeah, it's cool. Have a great time here. And when you have a population that's mostly farmers and homesteaders, a Greenland sounds it sounds lush, like you said. False like, advertising. <laughs> exactly. Like we can farm there, we can grow things. It may not be as lush and green as the name suggests. However, it certainly has some other major draw cards. This is something that you don't get to see very often. This big ice only comes from the ice sheets. Um, and having them grounded in here gives us a platform where we can see them fall apart. We can see their life cycle going on in front of our faces. And they're just stuck here. They can't go anywhere. No, they're going to be They could be stuck here for years. This ice could get grounded in here for multiple seasons. Like, so is this like the retirement village <laughs> of glaciers? Um, yeah, I love that, actually. Yeah. This is their retirement village. So eventually, they probably will perish. Uh, but until then, they're just uh, hanging out, enjoying the cold polar climate, I guess. Iceberg Alley is one of the most surreal and remarkable landscapes I think I've ever had the pleasure of visiting. And on our Arctic adventure experiences like this, they really are a daily occurrence. And it's so rare that people would have the opportunity to even come here, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Greenland is remote, um, but we're on the east side of Greenland. We're in the northeast corner of Greenland, so we're in the remote of the remote part of the world. So where there's few people who come to Greenland, there's even fewer that come to where we are in Scoresby Sun Fjord. Scenic Eclipse has a fleet of kayaks on board to get us even closer to these breathtaking sights. My heart is starting to race. The closer I get to that, 
the more excited I'm, I'm getting. And this is the beauty of a kayak, isn't it? This access that you get. Being at the water level, and if you can get up to some of these growlers, you'll hear the ice. And there's air that's trapped in there that's been in there for tens of thousands of years. So you hear like a snap, crackle, pop, and it's just, it's, it's, it's magic. Greenland is famous for its kayaking, but so few people get to come to this part. As you can see, it is just so difficult to access, but that is the beauty of this voyage, and particularly being on a kayak. You can come to these places that have the most surreal name, like Iceberg Alley, and you just get to literally enjoy the waters. Days like this give you a true appreciation for the term Discovery Yacht. And best of all, the discoveries are not limited to what you find off the ship. You know, the lovely thing about this being a smaller group of people on board is that you'll always find little pockets of calm and new places to wine and dine. I just discovered today that there is a champagne bar on board, so I've made some new friends. Champagne's my middle name. To sip champagne and to look out the window as the icebergs pass by, that is the caviar on top. It's 100% Chardonnay come from the Grand Cru vignettes. Located in Lumiere, the French fine dining restaurant on board, the Champagne Bar is the perfect prelude to one of the many memorable dining experiences on board. That is so good. Oh, that is, is that... Yum. My mouth is amused. <laughs> Beautiful morning. It's like a mill pond out here. Our Arctic islands journey aboard Scenic Eclipse has today landed us in one of the most remote communities on the planet. Itakortumut in eastern Greenland was founded in 1925 by Inuit settlers. Frozen in for over nine months of the year, it really is an extraordinary existence for the village's approximately 400 residents. What's it like raising a family here? It's challenging. Yeah because uh, you can have polar bears coming nearby all year round. So for myself, for my family, if we want to travel nearby, we need to have a gun. My kids are not allowed to go to the mountains on their own. Yes. Um, on the sea ice during the winter, it's too risky. So they learn to be in this area. Even it's hard sometimes for them, they try to Try it. Challenge. Challenge to me. Yeah. Push the boundaries. Yes, yeah, they yeah. do. This is a land of raw and rugged landscapes, bitterly cold summers and even cold winters. Something like this, you're not going to find anywhere else in the world. I don't think so, not anymore. That's how unique this place is. How often would they have ships come in here? They only get resupplied once a year. And on the odd occasion, I've heard that, that they can't even get in with a supply ship. And then uh, when it comes to expedition ships, like the Scenic Eclipse, yeah. then uh, that only comes in when the ice opens up. And this year, the ice was here. It's hard to believe, but the ice was fully covered this fjord one month ago. So we are one of the first ships in this season. From here, Scenic Eclipse is transporting us further south into Iceland a land of adventure and ferocious beauty. Despite having a population of just over 2,000 residents, Isafjordra is the largest and liveliest town in Iceland's West Fjords. Fishing has a long history around here and is still the number one pastime, both for recreation and just as a way of life. Osbor, don't forget to roll the R's, 
is an example of the fishing hubs that lined the shores of Iceland for over a thousand years. You can see from here they have direct access to fabulous fishing, but can you imagine how tough life would be living here in the depths of winter? Apparently the fishermen would wear loads of wool and big sheepskin overalls. The houses were heated by peat fireplaces and they would dry their fish in the, in the drying huts, salted and cured in sour milk. Tough life, but great fishing. Fabulous view. Discover the benchmark in ultra luxury cruising on board Scenic Eclipse 2024 or 2025. Experience an all-inclusive journey of a lifetime with over 60 destinations to discover. Getaway viewers can save $300 per person off select Scenic Eclipse cruises. So for more info or to request your voucher, just visit scenicgetaway.com.au. Call 1-300-790-372 or chat to your nearest Scenic Travel Advisor.